This is a good looking trout and it tasted even better, but it was quite a journey to catch it. I don't really feel my toes anymore. Mag's range of movement. As my ice fishing skills aren't necessarily anything I would put into my CV, I thought this Easter would be the perfect opportunity to explore some new fishing grounds, catch a big trout and take you on a little adventure. But the whole thing turned into a bit more than I expected. At this exact spot, we would be in the water in summer. The power company has been opening the dams over there and the water level is now 3-4 meters lower than normal. Meaning that this here turned into a beach where you can make a fire and actually have a great spot to ice fish. At the cabin we are only getting small fish lately and I really have the hope that we might get some of the bigger ones in the bigger part of the lake. Well, the last time I tried making a hole in the ice was with an axe and with a meter of ice that was very unsuccessful. So you don't really have any other option than transporting the drill here. There we go. There are these rumors of a guy called Arnold in the cabin area here. And he's supposedly catching huge trout right where I was ice fishing. With that in mind, I transformed into a human mole and made holes all along the shoreline just to make sure that I'm not missing out on any of these secret fishing spots. These old ski shoes, uh, everything else and waterproof. I started bringing a plastic bag with an extra pair of shoes that I can use when we are ice fishing or just having a break. It's just shoe snackle. Nothing to eat. That looks so concerned. Now we're finding ourselves a few sticks that we can use to secure the fishing rods and then we're ready to put on bait. So as soon as that started, I can set up camp a little and make it a bit more cozy. Hey, pretty cold. Now we're getting some bait on. This one is ready to go to the ground or to the water.
birch that I had in mind ended up being a pretty good fire starter and was enough to get the coffee water boiling. In Norway, people are used to going out in winter, finding a good spot in the snow or on the ice and make a fire to brew some coffee. But for me, this is still quite new and special every time I'm actually doing it. The coffee was great, but fishing wasn't. The only thing I caught that day was a fairly decent sunburn on my hands and my right cheek. No matter how many fishing spots I tried, I did not get any bites. So mentally I checked this off the list and treated it more like a good time with Yuki and having a bit of fun playing around on the ice. In an attempt to wrap up the video the day after, I went out to a fishing spot the neighbors have been using where I knew there was fish. And we actually caught two tiny arctic char. It just didn't feel right to wrap up the video with these windy clips and tiny fish. And then overnight, winter just turned into summer. My father-in-law decided that this birch had to go for firewood this year and through that coincidence I'm now having unlimited amount of birch sap which is pretty nice, really feels like spring even though there's still snow laying behind the camera. Ow ow, these ants here. Um, I haven't missed insects so much during winter I have, I have to admit. Now the first 3-4 meters of the shore towards the ice are open. The water might be too shallow to set out a net, but the ice is pretty thin by now. So I have the ambition to walk out there and remove maybe 2-3 meters in that direction and maybe 10-15 meters in this direction so that I can get the net up to maybe 1.5 meters of depth and fish right along the ice. The thing is just that this water is actually still really cold with this giant ice cube in there. As I said, the ambition is reaching 1 meter 50 for the net. So maybe I can be in the water until, well, hip height to make this happen. Oh, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. At least it already checks the ice bath off the list for the day and tomorrow and the day after. Trying the shovel first and see if we can get through this here. I don't really feel my toes anymore. Mag's range of movement. While defrosting here for a minute or a few more minutes, I think I came up with an idea that hurts a little bit less. The problem is now that whatever I chop off with the shovel 
stays in front so that the boat cannot go much further in. But uh, I'll try to make a straight line in there now and just shovel ice out behind me so that I can just cut off on the side. That's the plan now, you know. Plans never work here. You look a bit defeated. Thank you, Tia. That's exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> to get the net under the eyes, I set up two poles. At the right one, I then attached a rope, which I dragged with the boat across and tried to get it with the shovel right under the ice line. Once that was working, I attached one side of the net to the end of the rope, got back to the other side and dragged it across. Water froze over again, not too thick, maybe five millimeters. So I think we can still get to the net with the boat. At first we have to detach the rope on this side so that I can pull on the net from the other side and get it back out there. And then if there isn't anything in the net, which I would hope, then I'll just pull it back here. Top speed, absolute top speed. Quite some ice. I don't know where we're stuck, but we are. Yeah, oh yes, there was just the rope on the other side. That was it. Ah, come on. That was it. Doesn't feel like there's anything in here. Come on. Nope. Zero. I could imagine that it was because I have been making extreme amounts of noise here that the fish left to the very other side of the water. I'll just put it back out. I'll leave it for two days this time. Yes! 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 Nice! First trout of 2023. Let's get you out of here. Finally, we got one. And another one! Yeah, this guy has been a bit longer in here. Bit bigger, bit longer. Already frozen. We finally managed to get the first brown trout of the season. Not only did we get one, we actually got two, so it should be enough for a decent sized dinner. It's a really good feeling to be able to catch parts of your own dinner. You're obviously not going to fill up your fridge with this. And me taking two, three weeks to catch the first trout of the year isn't particularly good for survival either. But having the option to get a nutritional addition to your regular diet plan and your supermarket purchases is worth quite a lot to me. 
Now we're going to make sure that we set the net back out and that there's no danger for any passing birds to get into it. And hopefully over the next two days, I'm going to get a few more fish, maybe one more dinner before we are moving to the farm.